The Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu was released in 2004 and is designed by Wes Anderson and has a huge cast including Bill Murray, Owen Wilson, Kate Blanchett, with Willem Dafoe, Michael Gambon, Jeff Goldblum and Angelica Houston. And basically the film tells the story of Steve Zazu, played by Bill Murray in the film, who goes on a lot of sea voyages and he makes films out of his sea voyages that he goes on. And basically as we see at the start of the film, on one of his sea voyages he lost his best friend slash mentor at the hands of a mythical shark. So Steve Zazu, played by Bill Murray in the film, he vows to go and get revenge on his best friend and mentor by going and killing this mythical shark. But just before he goes on the sea voyage to go and kill this mythical shark, he meets Owen Wilson's character. And Owen Wilson's character says he is the son of Steve Zazu, the son that Steve Zazu never knew he had. So long story short, Steve Zazu brings Owen Wilson's character along with him on the sea voyage. But at the same time though, as the sea voyage starts to progress, a lot of complications start to occur. For example, Kate Blanchett's character is thrown in the middle of it. Kate Blanchett plays a pregnant British journalist who goes on the sea voyage as well. And a lot of people on the boat on the sea voyage start to remember a thing for a crew on the sea voyage are called Team Zazu because they all work for Steve Zazu in the film. They all seem to have a thing for Kate Blanchett's character, but Kate Blanchett's character and Owen Wilson's character start to form a bit of a bond. But at the same time, though, you also get Michael Gambon's character thrown in the middle of it. At the same time, you also get Jeff Goldman's character thrown in there. At the same time, you also get Angelica Houston's character thrown in there. And Angelica Houston plays Steve Zazu's wife in the film. But at the same time, though, you also get Willem Dafoe's character in there. And Willem Dafoe plays somebody who on Team Zazu. He used to work closely with Steve Zazu, but he started to lose a bit of a bond. And Willem Dafoe's character actually gets a bit jealous of Owen Wilson's character. But the main part of the film is Steve Zazu getting revenge on his best friend and mentor by going and killing this mythical shark but at the same time though Owen Wilson's character falling in the middle of it and Owen Wilson's character says he's the son of Steve Zazu that Steve Zazu never knew he had but at the same time though all these characters coming in and out of it and everything comes down to the third act of the film where Steve Zazu faces off against the mythical shark but things don't go as you might expect and that's basically what of the Life Aquatic with Steve Zazu. And I really like this film. And it's funny because I watched this film for the first time a couple of months back. And I remember coming to the end of it and thinking that's one of the weaker Wes Anderson films I've seen. I mean, there were still things I liked about it in the first time, sorry, but honestly, I just felt it was a bit tedious and, it, and there was parts of the film where I didn't really know where I wanted to go. But then, to do this review today, I watched the film a couple of days ago. And honestly, I'm so happy that I did, because I enjoyed this film so, so, so much more than I did the first time. I mean, that's not to say that the film doesn't have problems. I have problems that I had with the film the first time, and even so the second time, I still have those criticisms to a degree. I ultimately enjoyed it so, 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 so much more the second time, and I'm so happy that I did. I do still think it's one of the weaker Wes Anderson films. But to be honest, that's saying something, because actually, I still think it's got a lot of things going for it. One of the things I think is really good about the film is the fact that it's just, it's a charming Wes Anderson film in the end. And I think, you know, it delivers on what you'd want from a Wes Anderson film. It's a bit postmodern, it's a bit quirk, and at the same time though, it is really fun to watch. And one of the reasons I like this film so much is the fact that it is just fun to watch. It is just charming. And yes, it does have its tears moments, but at the same time though, I had a really enjoyable time with it. You know, there are moments in the film that actually made me laugh out loud. I can't tell you how many comedies I've gone to see and I just haven't laughed out loud. But I laughed out loud quite a lot in this film. And at the same time though, I think it's got some really enjoyable performances. I really like Bill Murray and Steve Sazu. You know, it does kind of Bill Murray performance that he does in a, lot of, in a lot of films nowadays where he's kind of depressed but at the same time charming and at the same time fun to watch. And there's a lot of other good sequences of him in the film. And I really like Bill Murray's performance. Actually, there's one in scene in particular which comes to mind where he's in his suit ready to go underwater and he just gets his music on that they listen to when they scuba dive under the water and he just starts dancing to it. It's a, it's a really funny sequence because it almost comes out of nowhere because the film itself is actually quite downbeat and everything but then you will just get a funny sequence in there which just kind of comes out of nowhere and it just works really well. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, some of the funny sequences in the film do feel a bit forced but they still worked in my opinion, they still make me laugh. I think the film also has a lot of other good performances as well. Like Owen Wilson's good in the film, which that's a funny thing with Owen Wilson. Because I don't like his performances in any non-Wes Anderson films. Yeah, I love his performances in Wes Anderson films. Honestly, I love his performance in the Dark Unlimited, Limited, and I love his performance in this film as well. He's so good in the film, he really is. And at the same time though, what was so unique about his character, which I'm gonna go into a bit later in this video, was the fact that he his character, not to give too much away, but he provided the emotional punch to the film, which I didn't expect. I'm gonna go into that again a bit in this video. But at the same time though, everyone else gives off really enjoyable performance. You know, Kate Blanchett's great. She's just, she has a British accent in the film, which is really good as well. And at the same time though, William Dafoe is great, Michael Gambon's great, Jeff Goldman's great in the film. I was like watching Jeff Goldman in the film and he's really good in this film. And at the same time, so is Angelica Houston. And honestly, everyone gives off really enjoyable performances. And by the way, the film actually has a small cameo from Noah Baumbach. If you don't know who Noah Baumbach is, he actually acted as co-writer on this film. 
as well as that, he also went to write and direct uh, My Story in 2019, which is a film I really like, which got Oscar nominations, I think, by the way, as well. And I really like My Story, so kind of nice seeing a small coming from him. I only know it's the second time, because the first time I was, I didn't actually know that, you know, Noah Bombach actually acted as a co writer in the film. And then he pops up in a scene, I think it's involving Bill Murray, Michael Gambon, and I think almost the guys, he just pops in the background of the scene, he got no line of dialogue. I was like, oh, that's Noah Bombach, but anyway, there's a lot of movie trivia in there. But anyway, going on to that thing with the emotional punch, though. Now, this is where I think the film succeeds. I think the best Wes Anderson films are films which, you know, they're really, really fun to watch, but then you get to a certain point, probably in the third act of the film, not always in the third act of the film, but probably in the third act of the film, you'll have that emotional punch, and the emotional punch just works so, so well. I'm not going to get into what the emotional punch was, but honestly, when it came, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that coming at all. I mean, obviously, I knew it was coming the second time. The first time it came, I was like, oh, my God. And even so, the first time, I've been a bit sniffy about it the first time I watched it. That emotional punch still worked. And the second time, it works even more because I was enjoying the film so, so much more. And so, when that emotional punch comes, you really do feel that. And that's, personally, myself, when I think Wes Anderson films are at their best. When they have that emotional punch and have that moment where, when you look back on the film, that's the moment you remember the most. Not all the funness of it, because obviously there's a lot of fun in Wes Anderson films. Not all the funness of it, but the emotional punch, the moment when you literally went, Wow, all the morning we literally thought, didn't expect that at all. And that's where I think the life of Classic with Steve Z works the best. I mean, obviously it's got some really enjoyable performances, and it is really enjoyable to watch in my opinion. But, when the emotional punch comes, it comes and it's just, it's done so, so well. And like I said, the film is enjoyable though. I did really enjoy it, and I enjoyed it so much more the second time. I think I enjoyed it more the second time, because I had a bit more appreciation for Wes Anderson films. And at the same time though, I kind of knew what I was going in for. That always happens the second time. The second time, the second time you watch a film anytime, you'll always know what you're going in for, and maybe you'll enjoy it more. That's why I like watching films a second time. That's that's what I'm going to start doing more when I'm going to review a film. I'm going to start watching it twice because sometimes you might watch a film the first time, not liking that much, and then sometimes you watch it a second time and actually really like it. And that's kind of how I feel about this film. And the thing is, the second time I watched the film, I enjoyed it so, so much more because even so the film do, does still have, you know, those slow, tedious moments and those moments where you don't really feel what, you know, where the film really wants to go. I didn't mind it as much because I knew I was going in for those moments. And at the same time, though, you know, some of those tedious moments do kind of make you appreciate the way you were starting to shot the film. There's a lot of cinematography in the film, which is quite fantastic in my opinion. A lot of shots was like, oh, that's a really good shot. And at the same time, the film is also directed well. You know, the first time you actually see Steve Sazoo's boat at the full, he's got one long tracking shot. Which which literally just goes around the bow, which Steve Z runs, and it works really, really well. And yet, at the same time, though, there are some moments which kind of come out of nowhere in the film, some like force moments. Like, there's one moment in particular, which I'm not going to give too much away here, but there's one moment in particular where Steve Z, where pirates invade the Zazu bow, and basically, Bill Murray as Steve Z, basically, he gets him, he just kills all these pirates and gets them all off the bow. And it just kind of, it just kind of come out of nowhere because in the scene where Steve Z is like killing all the pirates, you just get this, you know, rock song on in the background. It just, it kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I enjoyed that sequence quite a lot, but it just kind of came out of no, I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, there are some fourth moments in the film, but I still think, you know, it works for the most part. And even so, there are some slow moments I didn't mind so much because when you have those moments when it delivers, when you have those moments where things are happening which you kind of want to happen for so long in this film, it just worked where it needed to. That's what I'm trying to say. The film worked where it needed to. And even so, it does have those slow moments, I didn't mind as much. And I will say this if you are thinking about watching this film, which I do recommend you do, Go watch another Wes Anderson film before this because you you will kind of know what you're going in for though. Because honestly, there are parts of the film which are very Wes Anderson, and if you watch Wes Anderson film, you know what I mean. Not too much two-dimensional direction. I said before, I say again, you know the whole thing with the camera knowing where the story's come for the actual characters to do in the film. And we like that about Wes Anderson films. And we like that about this Wes Anderson film. But just you might want to watch another Wes Anderson film before you go into this one, just so you kind of know what you're going in for. But personally. All of that, you know, Wes Anderson postmodern direction never really bothered me in this film. I actually kind of liked it about it. And honestly, it is just really enjoyable to watch. When you have those moments to deliver, like there's one moment in particular, go and get Jeff Goldman's character back after he's been captured by pirates on this island. And it's a fantastic sequence, but I was just, you know, it took a bit of time to get to that sequence, and there were some slow moments leading up to that sequence. But when that sequence came, it worked really well. I liked that sequence quite a lot. At the same time, the one thing I almost got to mention was the music of this film. I think this film has some really good music, because not only does it have this really fascinating score, in my opinion, by Mark Mosberg. It's this electronic score for the most part, but there's, like I said, that moment when, you know, Steve, teams as you go on the island to go and save Jeff Goldman's cards from pirates, you just get the electronic score going on, and then basically just builds into this big orchestral score, and it works really, really well. I really like the musical score for them. It's, it's actually growing me quite a lot. So at the same time, though, you also get a lot of fantastic songs in there, like a, like a lot of fantastic David Bowie songs in there. Like, the film has a really good use of Life on Mars by David Bowie one stage, which I liked quite a lot. At the same time, though, it's not just, you know, the David Bowie version of the songs in there like you have Dave Bowie songs in there but song in Portuguese 
by this guy who's on the boat, you know, on the sea voyage with Team Zazu, with, your, with all the characters in the film. You just have this guy for the film who just sings David Bowie songs in Portuguese. There's one moment in the film where he was singing Changes by David Bowie, and, you know, I didn't actually realise he was singing Changes straight away because he was singing in Portuguese. I actually really liked that about it. You know, not many films would actually have somebody singing, you know, a song by a famous artist, but in a different language. And actually, I felt that was really unique about it. And at the same time, though, going on to that whole uniqueness of it, I think the film is actually quite odd. And I kind of like that about it. I like odd films. Even so, I do still think it's one of the weaker Sanderson films I've seen. To be honest, that's saying something. Because it's still got a lot of things going for it. Yes, it's tedious. Yes, it's long on some stages. And yes, there are some fourth moments in the film. Which I don't think work as well as it could have done. But I really like it. And I really like this film because it's fun. It was really funny in my opinion. Especially the second time I watched it. It was really fun. It was really enjoyable. Only up to a certain moment. Because then it had this big emotional punch. Which is when I think the film worked at its best. And personally, I really like this film. So for that reason, I'm going to say that The Life of Classic was Steve Suzu. I'm going to say that it's an 8.1 out of 10. I mean, this film isn't for everyone, and that's fine, honestly. So I can see why some people might lose patience with this film. I can see why, you know, some people might just think this film is alright. Nothing particularly special. I mean, like, I did the first time. When I first time I watched the film, I just thought it was fine. Nothing particularly special. But then the second time... Funny thing is, I just I enjoyed it so, so, so much more. Whether it was just, you know, the bond between Bill Murray's character, Steve Sazu, or Owen Wilson's character, or whether it was just the emotional punch in the third half of the film, or whether it was just, you know, the moments in the film where the characters just kind of become more than, you know, two-dimensional characters, no pun intended. When you actually dive into them, there's a bit more to them than there is. Or, you know, the moments where, you know, the film's actually really, really funny. Or the moments in the film where you just smile and go along with it. Or the moments in the film where it's just so well directed, And the moments in the film where, even so much slow, you still kind of enjoy it anyway. Yes, it's a bit too postmodern. Yes, it is slow. And yes, I can see why, you know, some people might lose patience with the film. It's not forever, and that's fine. And even so, I do think it's one of the weak West Anderson films. That's saying something, because it's still really good in my opinion. So for that reason, I'm going to say that The Life Aquatic with Steve Sazu, I'm going to say that's an 8.1 out of 10 for me. Anyway guys, what do you think of The Life Aquatic with Steve Sazu? Do you love it, do you hate it, or have you just not watched it? If not, why not? Please do comment down below, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching, and if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like subscribe on the video, and look forward to many more, both film and TV's coming very, very soon on this channel. See you guys again soon, but bye for now, bye!